This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Everyone, to the Kailal Igor de Perka. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the all time greatest Gedele Yisrael, the Marvit Seitaira, the Bionis and Ibishets. Bionis and Ibishets lived from 1690 to 1764. And uh, if one would look at a list of all the Svarim that Bionis and Ibishets wrote in his lifetime, you come out with probably more than 50 different svarim that Rabbi Yannis and Ibershitz wrote. So one would imagine then that a man who wrote so many svarim, you'd, uh, you'd imagine somebody who uh, was confined to his Dalad Amos. He sat in a room, in a dark room, with piles of books over his head. He was some kind of secluded recluse. But Rav Yonason Ibishes was the exact opposite. He was one of the most colorful personalities in history. I mean, he had so many different variety, a variety of acquaintances, from priests to missionaries to, um, to uh, the Reform. To, and he debated with Christians and with Reform and with Moses Mendelssohn and with Sabadians. And he was really one of the most colorful uh, personalities of all time, but also one of the greatest Marvitse Torah. Even by the count of his detractors, he had probably more than 24,000 students in his lifetime. He had more than 24,000. And if you were a Rav in the times of Yerushan Ibishitz, chances are he was your Rebbe. Chances are he was your Rebbe. He looked around the corner from... Uh, from you? From Mr. Vendon. Yeah, well, they yeah. Well very well. No, that, that goes without saying, yeah. <laughs> so, Rav Yerushan Ibishitz, um, he wrote many, many Sfarim. He was a Rosh Hashiva. He was the Rav of Prague. He was a master Darshan. And he's also what we call a master Porger. P-O-R-G-E-R. What's a Porger? It's an English word that is completely antiquated and I don't think anybody knows what it means. Porger means a Menaker, someone who takes out the Gid Nasha. Yeah? He knew how to take out the Gid Nasha. Nowadays, you go to Brachs, they're not taking out the Gid Nasha. They're removing the whole hind quarters. Because exactly the Gid is Asr and the Chelev, that's Yoinik from the Gid is Asr and anything near there, so you don't get confused. It's a lost art. But Rabbi Yonison Ibishitz was an expert in removing the precise Gid Hanosh. I think they do that in Israel. Perhaps. I think they do in Israel. But um, we don't just take out the Gid, we take out the Chelev that, that the Gid is Yoinik from. Okay. Now, the Chlal, the whole prohibition of Gid Hanosh is a very mysterious, a very mystical Isser. Because the Torah never says, don't eat it. The Torah in what we call a narrative form, the Torah tells you a story. That the Malach of Esav was wrestling with Yaakov, and the Sar Shal Esav dislocates the hip socket of Yaakov. And then the Torah says, right? Therefore we don't do it. Right? That may just mean like a minog, a custom, something we refrain from. But no. We know our tradition is it's a lot. It's a lot in the Torah that you are not allowed to do it. But yet the Torah doesn't write it like that. It's written in narrative. It's written in a story form. Okay. The Chalal, the whole Isser of Gid Hanosh is very mystical. And that is because Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes, Api Kabbalah, we know how many Lavin are there in the Torah? 365 Lavin. And we have 365 days a year. And the Isser of Gid Hanosh corresponds to which day of the year? Tish above. And that's why Api Kabbalah, some say, Rabbi Yaakov Emden brings this down in the Sefer, Yaakov Edus Yaakov. Rabbi Yaakov Emden says that when Mashiach comes and we no longer have Tish above, it will be permitted to eat the Gid Anasha. And that is why the earlier, the early Sabadians were makbid to eat Gid Anasha. Yeah? The early Sabadians, Bidafka, went out of their way to eat the sciatic nerve because they held that Mashiach had come. And therefore, Kfar Tikein Yerach Yaakov they held, and they ate Gira Noshin. So you have to understand the background of what we're going to talk about. Bechlal, the whole Isser of Gira Noshin is very mysterious, very mystical. And we're going to learn about an incident that happened in history that shook the entire world. Literally shook the world. Okay? Okay. You ready? This is from the Vienna and Ibish. It's a safer, the crazy who plays the on Yaradea. Simin Samache. Says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz. You ready? Nice Shahaya. Vihine Bismani. In my times. Haya Menakir Echad. There was a certain porger. A Menakir. Afilu Baal Torah. 
He was a Ben Tyra. He was an expert. By the way, Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz himself was a very big expert in Gedan Nasha. As Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz himself writes, that, uh, you know, one of the G'day who so lived in the times of the Chassam Sefer, his name was Rav David Deitch, Rav David Deitch. And Rav David Deitch printed in 1750, you have on your sheets, Nidfas, I forgot to write what year it was, you could put in 1750, he published a Sefer called Sino Le David on the Hilcha Halachos of taking out the Gid Nasha. And who does he go to to get a Haskama, to get an approbation, none other than Rav Yannis and Ibishitz. And Rabbi Yannis and Ibishet says, you know why they're coming to me for a uh, haskama? Look at number two. Bikesh la haskama yadi. They came to me to get a haskama. Li yoisi baki ba'umnas hazeh. Because I'm an expert in this field. I'm a big expert. U baki bahen. I'm proficient. U vishmoisan. I know the exact names of what the various parts are. Right? So Rabbi Yannis and Ibishet is saying, that I'm the expert in the field. I looked at what Rav David Deitch wrote. I spoke to him face to face. I went to the butcher with him. And I saw that, you know, he knows what he's talking about. There are no mistakes. So if you understand Ibishitz, the kitzer is Rosh Hashiva, Darshan, Rav, and expert Menachem. So you ready? Back to number one. So this purger comes to... Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, Umum Chelamoid, he says, not only is he a bentar, he's an expert, the Nishtabish Badaitai. The only thing is, he's a abyssal uh, farmisht. He's a little crumb. You know why? Loimer al Gid Acher Shuha Gid Huamiti. He comes into the town, he says, I want everyone to know that every single from a yid in this town eat is eating tarfus. Because you think you know what the Gid Anasha is, you're all wrong. You got the wrong Gid. It's a different gid. This porter came in, he said, You, your parents, your grandparents, they're all they're all oichle nevela sutre. They're all oichle yeser. Like Muncie. Yeah? Worse, right? <laughs> Worse. They're all oichle yeser. So how come he said that he knows everything? No, this is this is what this uh, Menaker is telling in Prague, and he comes to the city of Prague, and this Menaker, who was well known, he was a big Talmud Chacham, and he was an expert, and he's saying you're all wrong, you're all eating a basar shreifa. <laughs> Not only did he go to Prague, <laughs> he went throughout Germany. Umarish habrios, he created a tremendous commotion, tremendous stir, ad shabala Prague until he comes to Prague, the Yitzia Devarov. Lefanai says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, he came to me. And he came before all the Ga'inim of the city of Prague. Says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, I investigated. And this man doesn't know what he's talking about. Because the Ga'inim don't care about the Gid Anasha, right? Eino rak the behemoth zecharim v'loy the behemoth nekem. The first thing I realized that Rabbi Yonis and I is that this nerve, yeah, this nerve that he had the nerve to claim <laughs> is not the Gid Hanosha, right? He said, excuse me, he said this nerve is a Gid Hanosha. I recognize that this nerve is a nerve that only exists in male animals and does not exist in female animals. Okay, so again, he is identifying, this monarchy I wants to identify that the correct Gid Anasha only exists in male animals and not in female animals. Says Rabbi Anasin, but I showed him the Sefer, Mitzvah is good eyelids, one of the Rishayner, Rabbi Moshe Mikusi, Va'az Heresi Loi Smag, I showed this monarchy the Smag, Shekhasav, that the Smag writes, the Gid Anasha and Noyeg, Bizacharim, Vinekevois that the Gid Anosha exists in both male animals and female animals. You hear this? This guy claimed he got the right Gid. So Rabbi Yannis said, I showed him the Sefer Mrs. Gid that the Gid Anosha is a Gid, it's a nerve that, apply, that exists in male and female animals, and this Gid that he's talking about is only in males. Says Rabbi Yannis and boy, did I get him. I silenced all of his kindness, I silenced all of his accusations, and he went away. You know, he went away all sullen, all downtrodden. He was slugged up. I slugged him up, and that quieted the whole rash. The Al Kapanim says Rabbi Yonason, "Ain't listen like the nicker came al bakev yer Hashem, may rabim." 
do not rely on a poor girl unless he's proficient and he's guard fearing umiyain omdi al daiti says Rabbi Yonason the day my seichel kicked in shalamada ti hilchas nikar that I myself learned the halachos of divining lios baki behen uvishmosan I didn't trust anybody. The day that I learned the halachas, I ain't eating from, you know, the Vad Rabbanim of Prague. No way. I would only eat the food, not, not from my wife's kitchen. I didn't even trust her. I had to take out the veins myself. I would only eat my own handiwork. It's a good thing we got rid of this poor girl. You know, he was going to create this big stir. But I slugged him up. How did I slug him up? He wanted to say that the Gid is a kid right. that only is B'zacharim. But the Smag says that it's both B'zacharim and the Nekei Well, what, what is the controversy about It's a matter of butchering. Yeah. It's just... Uh, it yeah, but what if the butcher serves you pig? What if the butcher, instead of serving you roast beef, serves you ham? It's just butchering. Yeah, but he's butchering your neshama, right? Wait, wait, that, that's not what I mean. If you don't take out the correct gid, then you're, you're violating just, a law. Just train the butchers to take out the correct gid. And but that, that's the, the question at hand. The, the question at hand is, what is the correct gid? For centuries, the Jews were taking out one vein, and this porger came to the city and said, you're taking out the wrong vein. You should be taking out a different vein, and you're all eating tarfus. All right, so forget this porger, but uh, but everybody, but, but anybody in the meat business should be able to. Yeah, but the, that, that was the question. The question is, we need to be able, to, we need to identify. We need to. It's a very big deal. We need to identify what the correct vein is. If we don't have, if we don't have the right vein, people are going to be eating tarfus. You know, people are going to be eating tarfus. So this is how Rabbi Yonis and Ibish has slugged up the porger. The problem is. That this porger, porger is a menaker, a devainer. Yeah, it's an antiquated word. P o r g e r, a porger. A porger. P o r g e r. Yeah. A triber. Let's say we'll say triber. What do you say in English? Okay. Okay. The shlug up of Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz created more controversy than the Menacher himself. You know why? Because you could open up the smag, and the smag does not say one word that the Gid is in the male and not the female animal. It doesn't, doesn't say anything like that. So? That's Erstens, right? Svetens, number two, even if he did say that, which he doesn't, you know what he would probably mean? What he would mean is, V'noyeg b'zachar v'nekevos. You know who's not eating Gidan Asha? Men and women. Both. <laughs> he doesn't mean the Gidan Asha exists only in male animals, not female. By every single mitzvah, the Sefer Sifreya mitzvah is saying, Noyeg b'zacharim v'nekevos. Um, um, a man can eat chametz. A woman can eat chametz, right? V'noyeg b'zacharim v'nekevos. Men can eat chametz, women can eat chametz. It means chametz is found in men and in women. But we have chametz and we have like Cheerios embedded in the inside of us. The noyig b'zachar v'nekevus doesn't mean that the gid anosha exists by male animals and female animals. The noyig b'zachar v'nekevus means that men and women are not allowed to eat the gid anosha. Yeah, so this kuku. Every woman is chayv every lav. Yeah. Yeah, but he says by every lav the noyig b'zachar v'nekevus. Not every lav. Like sakifu, like satam lemeisim by by a kohenes. So why you said this to him? So. Anything that's tried by a woman is. is, uh, is it's very interesting. Very, it's very interesting. There is a there's a sefer called Sefer Taldais Adam, book number four, which was published in 1809, and it's a biography of Rav Shlomo Zalman of Velazhin. Rav Shlomo Zalman of Velazhin was known affectionately known as Rav Zemela, and he's the younger brother of Rav Chaim of Velazhin. And this is a biography written by Rabbi Cheskel Feivel. Rabbi Cheskel Feivel writes a biography about the younger brother of Chaim Velazhiner, but it's more of an autobiography about himself. And he says an idea that the reform movement jumped on and embraced this paragraph, like this was their, this was their calling. And he said like this, even though he was a tremendous Talmud Chacham near Shemayim, he writes, look, G'dayla Yisrael are human. They're human. They can make mistakes, he writes. 
Okay? How do we know Gedal Misa? Look at Rabbi Yannis and Ibishitz, he says. Rabbi Yannis and Ibishitz quoted a smag that doesn't exist. And even if it did exist, that's not what it means. So what do we see from here? That Gedal Yisrael, we have to be medabek to them. We have to cling to them. We have to ask them their advice. We need to get their das Torah. But it doesn't mean they're infallible. It doesn't mean they can't make a mistake. So what we learn from here is, if... Uh, those of us who are not Gedele Yisrael, certainly we always have to be worried, maybe we're making a mistake, and therefore we always have to a- ask the advice of other people. Yes. This is what the Toldo Sodom writes, and you'll say, Gladstein, what are you bringing this into the Shir for? It's like Apikarsos. It's printed in Shulchan Aruch. On your regular page in Shulchan Aruch, the Pischei Tshuva brings down this Toldo Sodom, and that's what he writes. Gedele Yisrael are not infallible. He quotes word for word what we're about to read. But when we say that this Menakeh said only Bizharim and not Benekevo, where did he say that? What? This Menakeh, where he no, said... No, the Menakeh pointed to that? a vein that Rabbi Yannison Ibishitz was able to identify. That? Where did he say that? That's what Rabbi Yannison is, is writing. That I recognize that this vein that this Menakeh identified is a vein that only exists in male animals and not in female animals. And I disproved him by... But, right? but he didn't say that this Benakir. No, no, the Benakir just said, this is the vein. It's called the, you know, the left anterior vein. And Rabbi Anderson Ibish says, the left anterior vein is a vein that only exists in male animals and not female animals. And, that was and the fact that this, uh, he was uh, shot in, <laughs> it means that he didn't understand at all what is Gidon Meshach. The, the, the you mean if Rabbi Yonis and I should slugged him up from something that doesn't exist, that shows Stam the guy was a complete yeah. Amara. Yeah, because he should fight him. Good. Should tell him this and this Good. and this. Good. Good. Yeah, they chap. No, no. Later on, they chap this Mara oh, oh. as their calling card. You see, even Gadolim say Gadolim can make mistakes. Right. <laughs> But I see what you mean. Okay, you'll see. You'll read the piece. You'll okay. read the piece. Look with your own eyes. Okay? And then you'll see that, you know, this is something that's brought down on the page in Shulchan Aruch. The Tzachet Shuva brings it down. Look at number four. Hine nasnu libeinu. This is from the Sefer Taldai Sad. Let us turn our hearts. Lasur achar makar hadvarm ha'ila b'smag. Let's try to investigate this smag that Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz is quoting. Chilek wa isasei sim kuf lamitas. Asher sham nizbayar. Dinei Gedanosha, in Simon Kuf Lamates, the Smag writes about the laws of Gedanosha, says the Toldoi Sotem, Bikashnu Sham, I look there, V'loi Matsanu, I didn't find it, Shum Remez V'zichwein Dvarim, he's coming to games. The man doesn't say a word about male and female animals. We have this many times in Shas, we have a lot of Gedanosha, we're showing them, we're showing them, yeah. that they, they have different gears. So let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Yeah. Yoganu, so he said maybe it's not the Smag, Maybe what Rebbeinu Sinai Bishit's meant was the smak. You know, there's a little gear such as the smak. Yoganu levakir shulachapis the smak. We went to investigate and to search the smak. Ki amarnu because we said ulay mishka v'tas seifer who smak v'makam smak says the Talmud Sadam. Maybe there was you know a printing error and instead of smak, uh, smak was there. Gam sham lo yunach lano. Even there, we didn't find any peace. No, not one word about male and female animals mentioned in the smak either. So therefore, you know what he said? He said, let's look through all the Sefer Rishon. What? Smak. Well, what, what the Torah said? What the Torah said? What is the Torah? The Torah? Pasuk, the Torah. The Torah the, what it said in the Torah. So what's the Pshat? Well, it's not a Pshat. 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 By the way, the Torah doesn't say anything about Gedanosh is like Hararam Hatulia Basara. It doesn't say anything about who's now to do it, why you're now to do it, when you're now to do it, what animals, behema, chaya, men, women, it doesn't say anything. It's all Tarshabapeh. So we have to look in the Rishonim. It's not in the Smag. It's not in the Smag. Gam, he says like this. I searched and I searched and I searched the Rishonim. As they came, so they went. I didn't find anything. Nobody. Nobody. The truth, let the truth stand by itself. You know what Rabbi Yadison must have meant. He must have meant to say for Hachinoch. Shekhasav, look at number six. The Sefer Hachinoch writes in Vayishlach. The Seder Vayishlach, Bedine Giranosh, Belashon Zeh. You know what this Sefer Hachinoch writes? 
בנוי הגס, מצווה זו בכל מקום ובכל זמן. Right? Even in Chutz Laaretz you can't eat it. Even when there's no Beis HaMikdash you can't eat it. Bezecharim uvenekevois, male and female. Ve'olsa amach shavtai, and you know what Rabbi Yonison thought the Sefer HaChinuch meant? She'kavonas HaChinuchu, that what the Chinuch meant was, She'mitzvah zu noi heges ve'behemo yisecharim uvenekevois nekevois. What the Chinuch means is, this Gerano should exist in male animals and female animals. Who is that? That's what Rabbi Yonison must have thought the Sefer HaChinuch meant. When he says, Nehegas, Bezachar Menekevos, what the Chinuch means, must have mean, according to Rabbi Yonison Ibishitz, must have thought what the Chinuch meant was, male animals have it, female animals have it. But says the Taldais Adam, what a terrible mistake Rabbi Yonison made. Why? Ulam Shkia G'dayla Hima'ayid. This is a very grave mistake. What the chinuch means is that men and women can eat gira nosha. Da'inu zecharim unakiz bnei adam. V'loi mach shavoyz ha'goyin, mach shavoyz of shalach chinuch. The goyin had a different thought than what the chinuch meant. That's not what the chinuch meant. Everybody knows that. Anybody who ever opened up the Sefer chinuch knows that by every single mitzvah he writes, v'loi heges b'zecharim v'loi b'nei kevoyz. Right? The, the, the chinuch writes... You know, don't eat treif. That's what the chinuch means, that men and, and women are treif. It means men and women can't eat treif. So the, the, the chinuch doesn't mean this gid is in male and female animals. What the chinuch means is men and women can't eat the animal. He says, Harry, come on, it's a comet, says, let's just say. Come on, come on, the Shabbos, the Harry, come on, I'm cast of Lashen Zen, I guess, Mitzuzu, but it's a voice. Says the Toldai Saddam, what do we do with this? Now that he's proven, that at least he thinks, Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz made a mistake, so how do we deal with that? Before right? How, do, how does, well, we'll see, don't worry. How do we deal with that? Says the Toldai Satam, Omeyata Yisa Kal Adam Kavachaymer Ba'atzmai. The point is not, no, I don't have to listen to Gedailam. The point is, you have to listen to Gedailam. Why? Because if even they could make a mistake, then Allah has Kama Vakama, you could make a mistake. <laughs> You can also make a mistake. Well, we'll have to see. Right? By the way, he is, he is a God of Israel. He doesn't come to the Fusum of We'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Don't get me started on that one. We'll have to see. Omeyata, Yisra kolam kavachar mevatsli. Im taninim ke'elu, if these giants, bechike hashkiyos hu'alu, were caught on the fish hooks of mistake, mayasa dege haraka kamayni lahadinatsu mehem, so what could we little goldfish say? Therefore, a person should embrace the statement of the Chacham, Sha'amar, Mekabal Aniho Emesmi Sha'amru. Right? You should accept the truth from whoever said it. Uvishav Katsdi. Right? Hashem should lead us in the true path. Now, I have to tell you, give you a disclaimer, I would never bring such a Maramakam in a shir or even say over privately, it's not for the fact that it's published on every single Shulchan Aruch. Anybody, any Bachar who ever opens up the Shulchan Aruch learns Pischei Tshuva. The Pischei Tshuva is one of the G'day Le'olam, brings this down word for word. He quotes it? He quotes it word for word. Ah. I'll show you. Look at number five. <laughs> Look at number five. <laughs> the Pischei Tshuva in Yaradeh Sim Samachai writes, Who is the Pischei Tshuva? Pischei Tshuva was... Uh, I believe his last name was uh, Eisenstadt, but um, I don't have uh, more details than that. He's one of the Achoinim. He writes on the sixth line over here, Gam b'sefer toldois Adam. I don't understand it. You told him it was like a hundred years ago, you say. This is true before that. No, 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 it had to be after. No, it's after. God, look what he writes. God, the Sefer told us Adam, Chelek Bez, Chashav Zeh. Look, if the Tal Adam wrote the biography of the younger brother of the Chaim Velazhener, so he's saying Tal Adam was in the mid 1800s. God, the Sefer told us Adam, Chelek Bez. What? No, it's published 1809. God, the Sefer told us Adam, Chelek Bez, Chashav Zeh, Told us Adam lists a whole laundry list of mistakes that were made. And he counts this. Ula Hayrais, and he's showing ki hashkia metsuda prusa kalachaim. Everyone can make a mistake. The kivan shetasu. 
right? Since the Tolis Adam writes, Rabbi Yonison was wrong, and he just pushes away what Rabbi Yonison said, it comes out, according to the Tolis Adam, if you want to eat an animal, you need to take out what they thought the Gid was for hundreds of years, and what the Menacher said the Gid was. Because Rabbi Yonison, I wish it's a shlag up, Tolis Adam says, is, is wrong. So the Pesle Tshuva says, Paskins, you got to take out both. You gotta take out both gidim. Vein lechal acharayim elm kemikum em shnei agidim. Okay. So now what we would like to do is we have to stick up for the cover of Rabbi Yonasan Ivishes. Did these people of Rabbi Yonasan Ivishes did not tell him you had made a mistake? Rabbi Yonasan Ivishes was nifter in 1764, and, and then 50 years later, when people are looking into the matter and learning the crazy you placey. In, in his days, they, they didn't they didn't look at it. If he writes, it says in the smog, it sounds like they took his word for it. You're going to start looking up the smog. Okay, go get the smog. So how many people are going to get up and get it? Okay. Maybe one person. And that person who gets up and get it is going to be looking. Mm. Oh, I can't find it. And even like the one in the middle, they can find it. What? A person like him like cannot, cannot make a mistake. Okay. What do you mean take that like, from the Okay, so let's see. What do you mean take out most gid? You have to there's take only it. one gid. No. There, a gid. A, the knocker is correct. There's only a bunch of Yes, a but uh, we're not so borrowed. The Tullus Adam is not willing to, uh, to completely say Rabbi Yannison Abishitz was wrong in terms of the location of the gid. He's just saying that the shlug up of the menaker is not correct. So therefore, we have to be chayshish for both opinions. We have to be chayshish for the shita of the menaker. We have to be chayshish for the shita of Rabbi Yannison. And we have to take out both of them. Okay. So Rabbi Yannison. There's no gid, according to the menaker. Yeah, but Rabbi Anderson says there is a gid. There is a gid. But in a male animal, you'd have to take out both. Okay. So Rabbi Sai, who comes to the support of Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz? None other than the Chsam Seifer. And the Chsam Seifer very courageously tries to defend his colleague, Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz. And he gives a pilpul to defend Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz. And this tshuva was written in 1830. So again, this is uh, 66 years after Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz passed away. Okay? So he gets like this. Sifroi kan higiani. I got your volume. Ba'ashar higiani alav b'shnei dvarim hinani l'hashem. I'm going to answer both of your questions. Rishayim, number one. Right? He brings down the whole story about how this poor girl mm-hmm. made a whole earthquake. And then a few lines down, the Chsam Soifer says, The Rabbim Tamu Aushkaga Gedoyla Sheyatsame Hashalitim. Many people wonder how such a terrible mistake could emerge from this guy in the Israel, Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz. The Smag Mairi. Now, by the way, as in esteem that Rabbi Anderson uh, that the Chassam Soifer held of Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz, the greatest compliment that the Chassam Soifer ever gave was to Rabbi Yaakov Emden. And Rabbi Yaakov, the Chassam Soifer calls Rabbi Yaakov Emden, he says he's a Navi. But, he does say, <laughs> yeah, he's, but besides saying that, you know, he says, the Navi. He says, the Navi. But anyway, Chassam Soifer says, how could a Shalit like Rabbi Yaakov make a mistake? Why? Because the Chassam Sefer says, look, we can't, we can't, you know, hide our head in the sand. The smag doesn't mean what Rabbi Yonason says in there, right? The smag ma'iri shenoig bezuchar m'yisraelim v'nekevo is kedarke b'chal mitzvah. The smag, now, it's very interesting. The Chassam Sefer is sort of taking for granted that the smag says it. And he's saying, what the smag means is that men and women are now to eat the get anasha. The only thing is, the smag doesn't say it. The Chassam Seifer could have said much better. There is no such smag. There is no such smag. But the Chassam Seifer, people are, we're going to see, people are matriyan. The Chassam Seifer, what are you telling me that the smag doesn't say what Rabbi Yonason thought he said? The smag doesn't say anything. So we'll see. From, we'll see. Maybe the smag says what the Rabbi Yonason said. In a different motion. And we'll see. That it applies to the Torah, not to the case. We'll see. The smag marry shenoig the zecharim yisrael men akevos kedarke b'cholamitz as lift the kain. Avol may hagid loy marry him who nenim some zecharim men akevos iloy. The kivan shatas nizrukal of nehag oinim hanal. And if Rabbi Yonason, together with all the chachmei prag, made this error, the dachal is avakana nimsa dvarv kayamim vein lachachrayim lo kenakrayim shnei hagidim. Says the chasam sofer no. 
Rav Yonason was sh- right on. How is Rav Yonason right on? So listen to this purple. You ready? Avada, what the smag means is, men can't eat the Giranosha, women can't eat the Giranosha. But says Sam Soifer, ah, let me ask you a question. The Torah says, Al Kain La Yoichlu B'nai Yisrael is Giranosha. That B'nai Yisrael can't eat the Giranosha. So how does the Smag know that women are not to eat the Giranosha? Why don't we darshan B'nai Yisrael for like B'nai Yisrael? So says Sam Soifer, what kind of drush is that? We never darshan B'nai Yisrael. Yes, sometimes we do. For example, Emar El Akayanim B'nei Aharoin L'nefesh lo yitama ba'amav And what do we darshan? B'nei Aharoin V'loi b'noi sa'aroin Why do we have a right to darshan B'nei Aharoin V'loi b'noi sa'aroin? Says the Chsam Soifer Whenever you have a logic to differentiate between men and women, then you could darshan b'nei v'loi b'nois. B'nei aron v'loi b'nois aron. Says Achsam Soifer, I have a very compelling logic to darshan. Al kein lo yoichlu b'nei Yisrael as get anosha b'nei Yisrael v'loi b'nois Yisrael. But the Torah always talk about b'nei Yisrael. Right. But this is you, only a particular text. Right. It always says Daber al B'nai Yisrael. It means men and women. But if you have a compelling svara to say why it should only be the men and not the women, then you have a right to say men and not women, like Daber el Akayanim B'nai Aharon V'loi B'nai Yisrael. Says Achsam Soifer, let me tell you what my compelling logic to say that Gid Hanosha should only be for men and not women. You know what the compelling logic is? Because the Gid Hanosha is only in male animals and not female animals. Isn't that a logic to say, if the Gid Anosha is only in men, male animals, and not female animals, isn't that a compelling logic to say that the prohibition of Gid Anosha is only to men and not to women? No. 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 Some say says yes. <laughs> if the, if the Gid Anosha is a, is a nerve that only exists in male animals and not female animals, isn't that a compelling logic to Darshan that only men are now to eat and not female? So if the Smog says women are not allowed to eat Gid Anosha, it must mean that Gid is in female animals. Oh, wow. Wow. That's wow. logic. <laughs> That's what Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz meant. Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz didn't misread the smag. The smag says, it doesn't mean it exists in female animals. It means women can't eat it. But if women can't eat it, then the nerve has to exist in female animals. Why? Again, why? <laughs> in other words, <laughs> well, the Chsam so is saying like this, that if it, the Torah says, B'nai... You have a right to say b'nei v'loi benos if you have a reason to differentiate between b'nei and benos. Mm-hmm. Some service says, I have a reason to differentiate between b'nei and benos. Why? Because maybe since the gid only exists in male animals and not female animals, maybe only men are not allowed to eat it and females are allowed to eat it. It must be if females are not allowed to eat gid anosha, it must be it's because the gid exists in female animals. In other words, when the, this, the Rabbi Yonis and Irish is not saying, is the smag do? says that it exists in female animals. But what Rabbi Yonis was deriving from the smag was, that if females can't eat it, it must mean the nerve exists in female animals. The Russian also said, the Russian also said, what's the alkane? What about alkane? Yeah. Because it, it happened, it, it, it's, it's because, because of what, if you, you want to I'll why? Because it's something which is dry for both of them. That's right. That's exactly correct. Well, okay. The Pashup Shad al is because the Malach dislocated hip socket of Yaakov, so therefore B'nai Yisrael can't eat it. Yaakov, yeah, so if you want to say, if you want to take this to the nth degree, then you would say Yaakov Vino was a male, right? So therefore you'd only do it for male. Just like with the Kohanim. You know, the, 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 okay, so, so what are you going to do with that? Like, I hear that. I hear that. What are you going to do with that? So now what? <laughs> because it, it, it applies to females. Yeah. That's what he said. Because it applies to female, so the, the alkane shows that, that, that the fact that it, that it was in, in, in Yanko, yeah. it, but it's also in, in, in and, and everything also has the given one. Because the alkane shows wow. that if you, if you, have, to, you have to take it a little bit further. Yeah, you're extending yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. But look, look what he says. Let's read this inside. And by the way, this is a major pilpal, you know. Yeah. Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz only writes, he showed him the smag. The smag doesn't say anything about whether. The female has the Gid Anosha. 
But if the smog says women can't eat it, now you have to make a whole pilp, you have to say a whole Reb Chaim Briska with the Reb Baruch Bear to explain what he means is, if females not eat it, it must mean that females have it, because otherwise we would darshan b'nei yisav and b'nei yisav. That's not what Rabbi Yannison says. Cool. But this is Rabbi Chassam Soifer's attempt to defend what he calls how the shalitim, how yatsa shkaga g'dal mi piyash Let's read inside. It's also shown the forger's self, and of course the forger yeah, right. surrendered, you know? So we have to see, but is this what he showed him? Chassam Soifer, this is the Chassam Soifer's defense. And the forger also was a Tamil Chacham, according to the guy from the cell. Yeah. If he saw it, so why Rabbi Yonatan Abishad didn't say this pilpul by himself? No, so the Chassam Soifer is saying, this is what Rabbi Yonatan Abishad meant, this whole pilpul. Look what he writes. Just by one word. B'kitzer Nimrat. B'kitzer Nimrat. Such a pilpul. Look what he writes. One, two, three, four. The fifth line in the second paragraph of number seven. L'chai ro'yesh li'ashev. D'loi darshinan ke'en. Excuse me. Let's start from the top. V'ani o'ymer. Divrei chachamim kayamim dahare yesh lachar. Kivan de Kaimalan B'nai Yisrael V'loi B'nai Yisrael Since we hold everywhere It's B'nai Yisrael Not B'nai Yisrael V'yad kan loi pligi Rabbi Yudh Rabbi Yossi Elo Yismuchos V'shosai Asr Lismach Right? We have Machlaikis Are women allowed to do smich on an animal? No Or are they not allowed to? But everybody agrees they don't have to so why don't we say the same thing for Gid Anasha? Only men are not allowed to eat the Gid Anasha Women are allowed to Right? Avakul so says the Chassam Soifar, No, we only darshan b'nei v'loi b'nois by a mitzvah saseh, not about a mitzvah sloi saseh, because by a mitzvah sloi saseh, ish b'isha ha-shavim l'chol davar shabbatayra. But then he says it's not true. Sometimes we darshan b'nei v'loi b'nois even by a lav, like emar el ha-koyhanim b'nei ha-aroin v'loi b'nois ha-aroin. Says the Chassam Soifar, you know when we darshan it? When we have a svara lechalik, so look in the last paragraph. The hash to osi shapir, to oisay hagir anosha biyakov. That uh, sorry, the hash to isa kedai tachif. You're gonna say the oisay hagir anosha biyakov. If that get anosha biyakov, who get the line nimsa the balchay and the kevois do not exist by female animals. Imkain shapir haya svara lechalik bein bnei yisrael levin ois yisrael. Then you would have a logic. The eighth cost of smag, so how could the smag write? No, you visit in the cave voice. Ah, so it must be that the fact that the smag says women are not eat it, it must be that this is a gift that exists by women, and that's how the, the Rabbanus Snabi should slugged up the poor girl. Sure. Comes along with Shlaim Kluger <laughs> in the Shasta Chuvas Tov Tambadas, which was published 1852, and he says, Somebody asked him, what is my opinion about what the Chassam Soifer says? I understand something. Did the smag say it or it didn't say it? Well, the, <laughs> the Chassam Soifer says, if the smag says... The Chassam Soifer is not saying he saw the smag. He's just saying, Rabbi Yonasan said he saw the smag. Aye, but that's not what the smag means. No, we could dread that that's what the smag means. Okay. So Rav Shalom Kluger writes, number eight, two lines on the bottom. That the Chassam Sefer was himlets. You know what himlets means? He came up with like a... He excused. He, he wiggled Rav Yenis and Ibish out of this. Derech Pilpel. Says Rav Shlomo Kluger that there is no way in a million years that is what Rav Yenis and Ibish meant. To say that Rav Yenis and Ibish said one line to the Menacher and what he meant was a pilpel a pilpel gadol. Says Rav Shlomo Kluger look in the next... A page, the top line. He's writing to his questioner. That which you didn't like what the Chassam Soifer said, you're right. You're not, you can't explain an Achron like Rabbi Yonis and Ibishin, such a, a long-winded pilpal. An Achron who not speak. You know, if one thing you want to say, that's what, you know, um, that's what the Rambam means. But to say that sort of Yenis and Ibishitz meant, that, that doesn't make sense. But says, Rav Shlomo Kluger, I have a bigger kash. I don't understand the whole rash. I know what the Chassam Sefer is talking about. The smag doesn't say it. But maybe the Rav Yenis and Ibishitz, the smag had it. In other words, well, what's the problem? You have a question. The smag doesn't say that, that female animals have the gid? 
Obviously, Rabbi Yonason is an addition of the smag. It's said that this is a gift that applies in male and not female. I mean, what's the whole earthquake? What's the whole rash? You have a question. Oh, that's not what the smag means. Yeah, that's not what your smag means. But if Rabbi Yonason Abishitz showed him the smag, and the guy walked away, he, you know, for the last 10 years he's been, you know, staring around the people, the butchers, and then Rabbi Yonason shows him the smag, and he walks away and he gives up. Obviously, that's what the smag said. Where is the smag? Where is the book? Oh, I don't know. But here's Smag at it. He says like this. <laughs> if this is what the Chassam Saif and Rabbi Yonashan Abish says, Nusach Hawaz, Yafam Ra Kresi Apres. Then the Kresi Apres is saying very good. Oh. He says like this. Now let's read this. Da'al Nashim lo have a kos of Lashim Zacharim ben Akevais. He says, I'll prove to you. I'm in the first paragraph, like seven lines down. That if the smog says v'noyig v'zacharim v'nekevais, he doesn't mean men and women are now to eat the gedanasha. Because if the smog meant men and women are now to eat the gedanasha, he wouldn't write zacharim v'nekevais. He said anasha menasha. How is that in the other halachos? In all, in all the other halachos, in shas, whenever you want to say men and women, you say anasha menasha. You don't say zacharim v'nekevais. Zacharim v'nekevais is 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 going on behemas. You know the the zachros and the nakros. That's one, how you talk about a behema. Also, what? We're not talking. We're talking about the smag now. We're talking about the smag. You're right. But the Elamai also. But the Chatam Sofer said, "My Rishonoyek b'scharim Israelim." Yeah, but the uh, Rabbi. Um, That's the last one of the Chatam Sofer. Yeah, but um, how we say b'scharim Israelim? Rav Shlomo Kugler is saying, "If that." No, but look at the Chatam Sofer how he talks. He says b'scharim Israelim. He talks to the animals that they are Jews. Yeah, but um, the Rishon Kugler is saying that's not that's not what the smag means. That's not what the smag means. The fact that he uses the charm and the it means male animals and females. Like what Shas says, he says the chulash and Shas b'chomakon. The makom chiyuvi of Turi shall nashim. When you talk about the obligations of Turim of women, it's isha or nashim, not a kevos. And also the lashon of noyeg. Noyeg is something that's applicable because if you want to say. Men and women are not allowed to do something, you would say, mutter or asa. Not noyeg. Noyeg means it exists. And whenever Shas writes noyeg, it's going on, on uh, karkafta de ga, it's going on the, the uh, behema. The only thing the is. Word, by the way, is, is, is the, that's part of the field for what he's saying. It's horrid. No, the Chsam is not learning like that. Chsam is saying the Noyeg Vizacham Nikhilis means men and, f- and women are now allowed to eat it. Yeah, but but if women are now to eat it, it must be because it exists in. in Using that lotion to, 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 to be, to be no, but I don't know. Holds... Let's, let's go through this. We have very little time. Let's go through this. But the Rav Shlomo Kluger says, the only thing is, I checked the smag. I checked the smag. That's not what it says. And also, and also, Bechlal, that's not how, how the smag writes. Noyig b'zuchar menekevos. He doesn't usually write like that. So Elamai, Elamai, it must have been a printing error. And instead of the smag or the smack, it must have said the Sefer HaChinuch. The only thing is that everybody knows the Sefer HaChinuch, whenever he says, Noyig de Zachar Menekevos, he means men and women are now to eat it. And therefore we're back to the Sefer Tzarachin. He leaves off of the Tzarachin. That there's no way, there's no way, first of all, that Rabbi Yonasan Ibishitz means what the Chsam Soifer says. And Bechlal, he says, the whole logic of the Chsam Soifer he disagrees with. Because if the Chassam Soifer is correct, that even by Lavin, you Kedarshin B'nai Yisrael, V'loi B'nai Yisrael, then you know what we should say? Women should be allowed to be Mechalo Shabbos. After all, what does it say by Shabbos? It says, V'shamru B'nai Yisrael, Sashas. V'yaka, Moshe's Kol Adas, B'nai Yisrael. And says of Shem Kugler, I have a very compelling Svar to say, that's B'nai Yisrael, V'loi B'nai Yisrael. You know what this Svar is? Why are women chayev in Kiddush? Why do women have to... But it's man grama. Because since they're, ha- they're now to desecrate Shabbos. Shomor v'zachor. Shomor v'zachor b'dibur echad amru. Since they're chayev in Shmira, they're chayev in Zechira. Says of Shomor Kluger, say pink fucker. Say it's just the opposite. Mm. Say, just like they're potter from Zechira, they should be potter from Shmira. Shmira. Why? B'nai Yisrael v'loi b'nai Yisrael. No, the only thing we know for sure. <laughs> no, that's very, very compelling. Very, very compelling. Because how do we know they're chayiv and shmira and zechira? Because they're chayiv and shmira. 
How do we know we're chayven shmira? Because we're chayven all laven. No, but not this lav. This lav should be different. This lav should be different. Why should this lav be different? Because it says b'nei. The lav of Shabbos. So what's logical though? They have to by my koyin. Oh, but the, oh, the other things that we say, there's a logic to it. Yeah, you know the what the kohanim, logic is here? The kohanim, the kohanim, the kohanim, the kohanim, the kohanim, the kohanim, the So I'll tell you a very strong logic. The logic is very strong. Yeah. They're putter and zechira. And shamer v'zachar b'divar echad amru. Why is it putter and Because it's man grama. It's man grama. It's, man -grama. But it, but it's, it's a hekish. The same way you, you want to use a hekish and say they're chayv and shmira, they should be chayv and zechira, I suggest the opposite. They're potter and zechira, they should be potter and shmira. So it's therefore we have a logic to say women are potter. So why don't we darshan b'nei v'loi b'nois? Says of Shalom Kluger, that is because we never darshan b'nei v'loi b'nois by lavin. Says of Shalom Kluger, the Chassam Soifer never said this. It's not true. He said the Chassam Soifer never said such. It is like lavin, right? The lavin loi b'nei v'loi No, that's b'nei aroin. That's B'nai Aaron, but not B'nai Yisrael. That's what Rosh Hashanah says. Rosh Hashanah Kluger, the Tema im Yatsu Dvar Melo Mitiv Hakadosh. The only Smag is the one that talks about Gid Anashe. What about other Rosh Hashanah that don't talk about it? The Rambam, the Rambam. No, nobody, nobody talks about nobody it. it. Rabbi, so let's finish up. Let's finish up here. Yeah. Where, where you get the Chassam Sofer to read? From the Chivas Chassam Sofer. Says Rosh Hashanah Kluger. You heard him. <laughs> did, did he write it or what? This is his handwriting over here. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Rav Shalom Kluger says, look, he says, the tema im yatsu dvar me lumi piva kadosh. Shalom Kluger says he doesn't believe that Sam Seifer could say such a thing. But he defends Rabbi Anderson from another proof. How? Because he says like this, I don't have it a hundred percent, but you ready what he says? There's a, there's a Mishnah in Chulin, that Tzadi Gimel, that says like this, you're allowed to send an animal, you're allowed to send an animal through a guy. Aye, but maybe he won't take out the good. No, you'll be able to recognize if he took out the good or not. How? Because Mekai Moi the Gemara says Mekai Moi You can recognize if the good is there or if it's not there. Sure. And if it's not there, in other words, if it's there, you'll know it's there. And if it's not there, you know it's taken out. You don't have to worry. It's recognizable. Says Rabbi, says Rabbi Shalom Kluger, he says, according to Rabbi Yonison Ibishitz, mm. that the Gid Hanasha doesn't exist in... Nekevos. Nekeva. The, according to the Menaker, that it doesn't exist in Nekevos. So what's the Gemara talking about? Makai my Nekar, Makai my Nekar. But maybe he'll, maybe he'll bring a female animal. And by female animal, it bechlal doesn't exist. So you won't know. So you'll never know. How can you say, Mekai Meinikar, but a, a female animal doesn't have a Gid Anasha. And don't tell me you could recognize between the, the, the piece of meat of a, of a Zachar and a Nekeva. So Elamite people are going to be Machmer. They'll be Machmer either yes, Mekai Meinikar, or not Mekai Meinikar. So it must mean you'll never confuse Zachar and Nekeva. Why? Because they both have the Gid Anasha. Okay? You'll think about that, Raya. Wow. But ultimately... He does not agree with, uh, with this tshuva printed from the Chassam Seifer. He says he can't understand this svar of the Chassam Seifer. But he gave a good tilts for uh, Rabbi Yonis Yeah. The, the only thing is that's what Rabbi Yonis and Ibrish had said. Rabbi Yonis and Ibrish has pointed from the smag, not from this Gemara and Kulin. Right. He g gave a good raya for the psak of Rabbi Yonis and Ibrish, yeah. but not to defend what Rabbi Yonis and Ibrish had told them. Did you say again the psak? I didn't understand the psak. In other words, you want to read it? Yeah, how we say that? I didn't understand. Here, look, in the last, bottom paragraph in the Rosh Hashanah Kluger, Achli Yashiv Min Hagen Shoy Soki How are we going to answer the prevalent custom that we only take out the Gid that has been taken out for centuries and we don't give any credence to this Menachar? Nira, Devadai Shekresi Uplesi Dala Lanu Marganisa Bema Shehevi Divrei Hama'ara HaKoshen Kedid She'eno Noig Bena Kemos. The Kresi Uplesi drew forth this nugget, this diamond, against his adversary, from the fact that this adversary said that the gid does not apply by female animals. What's the proof that it does apply? If you look in a Mishnah in Chul and Sadi Gimel and Beis, you could send the thigh to a guy. The Gid Hanasha B'Soicha with the Gid Hanasha. Aye, but maybe he's going to be Machshel a Jew. We're not afraid he's going to bring this Gid Hanasha to a Jew. The Jew's going to see it right away. A boy knows how to take the... No, no, in other words, you can give meat to a guy 
without taking out the gid, and you don't have to worry he's going to serve it to a Jew for supper. Why? Because if a Jew sees it on his dinner plate, he'll just take out the gid. Wait, would you recognize a gid if it was on your plate? Me? But the minute, the That's a person. personal question. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I shagged. <laughs> but, 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 but. Excellent. What? We don't, we don't, we don't, uh, I told you, we don't, um, we don't go anywhere near the gid. Nowadays, we just take the, we just take the whole, the whole hot coil. Upirish Rashi, the nicker shalai nitel hagid. Rashi says it will be recognizable that the gid wasn't taken out. and You don't have to worry. So the question is, what do you mean it's recognizable? How be re- what if you have a, a, a female animal? It's not going to be recognizable that it's there because bechlal it's not there. So if it's not going to be there, the question is if you're going to see a piece of uh, something on your on your plate and there's not going to be a gid there. So what are you going to do? But who said that? Is, what, what do you mean? The kasha. The kasha. Ma raya who is that? How are you talking? She yomer to menakeva who hayerach. And who when, said? But the menakeva doesn't have a gid on Asher. The menaker. The menaker said the menakeva doesn't have a gid on Asher. Aha. Okay, Rabbi. So let's let's finish up over here. Yeah. In 1930, there was a rabbi in Chicago, in uh, Los Angeles, by the name of Rav Shlomo Michal Neches, and he was a svarim collector. A svarim collector. He collected svarim. And uh, Reb Shleima Michael Nachas. And he lived in Los Angeles. And he collected early editions and uh, first editions of svarim. And he happened to have the handwritten... Ka- he happened to have, excuse me, the first edition of the Kresi. Okay? Published in the 1700s. And not only was it the first edition of the Kresi Plessy, it was the first edition of the Kresi Plessy that was owned by none other than Rabbi Yannis and Ibishitz. And Rabbi Yannis and Ibishitz, after he bought his own Sefer, wrote footnotes on the Sefer. And when he got to the line that I showed the Menachem, the Smag, Rabbi Yannis crossed out the word Smag, and he wrote, Samach He Nun, which stands for Seder Hanikor, which is something that was printed in the Torah. And if you look in the tour, it says, V'noyeg be'zecharim shayrim u'v'nekevois parois. So if you look in Rabbi Yonison's edition of the crazy place, Rabbi Yonison Ibishitz himself crosses out the word smag, which was a printing mistake, and he wrote, say der hanikar. And therefore, Rabbi Yonison Ibishitz was absolutely correct. He showed the porger that the Rishonim say, that the Gid HaNosheh exists in male and female. He never wrote the Smag. So the whole Pilpul, all the Chsam Soifer, and all the dozens of Achorinim that defend Rabbi Yannis and Ibishitz are not necessary because it was all a printing mistake. So why couldn't they find it? Because they didn't, they didn't, they had better things to do with their time than to collect Svarim. So he read, they write, look over here, one, two. Yeah, you know what, but this, this matters. The total of all of the sites, he checked all the places. Yeah, he did, he did check all the places. And where, and where does this Rabbi Nechus have? He checked the first edition of the Crazy Placey. And, 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 and. There's only the one source? copy of that Sefer. And, and what did this say? The Samachay Nun? Samachay Nun. Samachay Nun. Rabbi, so we're not even finished yet. <laughs> Look on the eighth line in number 10, the Paradise Yosef. You know the Paradise Yosef and Chumash brings down. Let me check the Samachay Nun also. There is a journal called... Have, no, they didn't have his, They didn't have the early edition of the crazy place corrected by Rabbi Yonison himself. Look what he writes. Hayotzi Lo'or Chicago. It was published in Chicago. Chilek Dar Chavaris Aleph. Hevi Harav Shloima Michal Neches, New Los Angeles. She'etzla yeish crazy place the Asher. Harav Rav Yonison Hidfis Bechayev Ve'altuna Tav Kuf Chaf Gimel. This was published in 1660, 1763. 1763. Ve'nimtza ha'goyf men Rav Yonison B'ksav Yodoy. It was the handwritten emendations of Rav Yonison. Ve'tevois. For us, heresy loy, and he showed the smag nimchak. He crosses out the word smag. Tevo smag. He crosses out smag. Uvet sida nichtav samachinon v'hu rashi tevos misefer echad seder hilchos nikor asher sham. If you look over there, nimtza be'emes she hagir anosha nimtza be'zacharim sharim uvenekevas paros upela 
It's Mamish one, the Sha'ara Yoim, Lahibit Shamadam the Smag Gufa. The problem is no one ever checked the smag, because in the smag it doesn't say anything at all about Gid Anosha applying by males and females. Says the Tzitz Eliezer, I don't buy this. I don't buy this. <laughs> Tzitz Eliezer writes, that's what Rabbi Anderson showed the Menaker, Seder Hanikur. Seder Hanikur is a very obscure Sefer. It's not a Sefer that, you know, we always pass in like Halacha Lamaisa. That's how we slugged. Here you have a guy, he's creating a tremendous, imagine somebody comes in and says, I want everyone to know that, um, that all the meat that we're eating is treif. And nobody knows how to answer. None of them are about to know how to answer. So what do I do? I take out, you know, one of these setelach that they give out in the shuls, yeah? And I show them, yeah, but it says over here in some guy's translation of the art scroll that, you know, you're wrong. So the, guy, the guy's going to go away because you showed from, you know, the weekly Torah, whatever, on, on some kind of handout that you read by the laning. So the, the, this guy who's been working his whole life to create a rash, you're going to slug him up? So it says, uh, so he has a seder hanikor, that's... That's not what uh, that's not what Rabbi Anderson used, but that's what Rabbi Anderson wrote, because any, you, anyone here could see the handwritten edition of Rabbi Anderson Ibishes is crazy place. He wrote Samach Einon. Says the Tzitzel Yezer. Let me tell you, it's different. Rev Nechas in Los Angeles, he doesn't know how to read Rabbi Anderson Ibishes' <laughs> handwriting. He thought that the Samach Hey, it's Samach Einon, but it's really Samach Hey Gimel. And really, it stands for Sefer Hilchais Gedolais of the Bahag, which is Mipi Divrei Kabbalah. Divrei Kabbalah. Says Rabbi Yonis, and says the Tzitzel Yezer, this is a much better Gersa change than what Rabbi Nechas is saying. Because think about it. What did it say in the Kresi Uplesi? Samach Mem Gimel. What did Rabbi Nechas want to change it to? What was the printer's error? Samach Hey Nun. Two letters off. For the mem to a hey and the gimel to a nun, nah. Much better to say instead of samach mem gimel, samach hey gimel. So then you only have one letter off. And Bechar Rabbi Yonis and was, was bringing in a much more authoritative raya, not to say there, Hilchas Nikar, the most authoritative, the Bahag, say for Hilchas Kedoilois. But and, ends off, ends off the Tzitzelias, let's read this inside. What do we learn from here? You have to be very careful how you write things, right? Because even if you just miswrite one letter, look at how much commotion and controversy you could you should cause. So he called. Look in the last. The whole rash is over one letter. Look in the, the last paragraph. Nevertheless, we find ha pison ha amiti. We find the true explanation legiloi haloit to explain the secret of the kreisy placey. Udvar of kenim. Rabbi Yonasan Ibishitz was correct. I'm reading the last paragraph on third page. Tvar of Kanim, his words are right. The Naamanim, they're they're fortified, the Makairois, Hachosiyam, if Rashim, based on explicit halachic sources over Raish Kulam, and the best source of all is the Devre Habahag. Virak Ta Saifer Shahlafas Ois Ba Ois. It was only the exchange of one letter. Hushagaram Lakal Harash Hagadal. That's what caused this whole controversy. Shekam misaviv ledvarav. The loy lechinam, and it's not for nothing. His a Rabbi Shmuel, it's Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Shmuel warned Rabbi Meir. Kisha haydiay. When Rabbi Meir told him shehinu lavla that he's a cipher, he said bini have a zohar b'malachtecha. Be careful in your job. Shemalachtecha malachas shemayim he shema tamechaser oisachas. Maybe you'll be missing one letter. Oy miyater oisachas. So you'll add a letter. Nimtzus machriv kala oylam kulei. The Rav Yonasan Ibishitz gave a winning response to that butcher. That he confused the whole world with his revelation. Rav Yonasan showed him the truth. The Tavcha Apanov, and he smacked him on the face. Chazar Achiranis, he retreated backwards. Vahayda al Tausai, Benacha Shakta Aretz, and the world was at peace. Have a wonderful day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.